Hello, everyone. Hello, Minnetonka Church family. Welcome to Minnetonka Live Connect. This is our third um, live chat. And I'm so excited that we have uh, three very special guests here with us today. And um, they are none other than our own young people. Woohoo! Are you guys excited? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you are? Okay, All right. So let's start with prayer. I'd like to ask Sergey, would you like to pray for us, please? Oh, ahead. yeah, sure. Um, uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for, um, you know, getting everyone together in a busy time of our lives with, with school, with work, with um, the entire pandemic going down. Um, please help us, uh, lead us where we need to be led. Forgive our sins. Amen. 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 Um, guys, so good to see you. So good to see you. Um, we have someone who is joining us from Silver Spring. Mm -hmm. uh, someone who is joining from Maryland, I would say. And someone who is joining from all the way from Iowa. Carmen? Uh, okay. Iowa, right? And uh, also our very own Minnetonka. Uh, Minnesota. So I have been really um, excited about this uh, conversation that we'll have tonight. I've been actually telling some of the church leaders that tonight I get to spend one hour with our young people. So without any uh, further ado, let me get started. Let me get started. Let's start from Carmen. Oh, Tell no. us who you are. <laughs> And tell us a little bit about yourself first, okay? Just how you would normally introduce yourself. Go ahead. All right. Um, so my name's Carmen. I've been a member of Minnetonka since I was born. <laughs> and I am a student in Iowa at Coe College studying theater arts um, with minors in music and Spanish. Okay, just share the last part one more time. It seems like you're studying, studying for more than one thing. So share that one more time. So you're doing what? My, my major is uh, theater arts. And theater art, okay. I, I have two minors, one in music and one in Spanish. Music and Spanish, okay. Hola, um, good evening <laughs> is what? Taylor, help me out here. Good evening is buenos tarde, buenos Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. This is good okay. afternoon. Buenas noches is good night. Right. Why don't we say um, welcome to everybody? Help, help me, Carmen, because we. Bienvenidos. Certainly, that's that's right. Because we'll certainly have viewers from around the world. Because I'll be sharing later on. Okay. Great. Okay. Now let's go to Taylor. Tell us about yourself. Tell me about yourself. Who are you, and what do you do? Um. My name is Taylor. I am a student at North Hennepin Community College. Um, I'm currently going for nursing. I have one more class before the program. And I'm also working as a CNA at a hospital. <laughs> what is CNA? Uh, a certified nursing assistant. Ah, so you're working at night, working I'm hard. Working nights, yes. And you earn money to go to school to become a nurse. What a what an amazing thing that you're doing. So now I understand when, when I try to text you, your WhatsApp things as sleeping. So I'm like, she's always sleeping. <laughs> I but am, I understand. I'm always sleeping. <laughs> well, because you have to, because you have to work at night. Okay, now let's go to Sergey. Who's that um, handsome man sitting next to you? <laughs> Do you know him? Uh, I don't know who you're talking about, <laughs> okay. but uh, I was talking to Taylor, but go ahead. Oh, okay, Sergey. <laughs> well, so who are uh, you and what do you do? Uh, my name's Sergey. I'm a, I'm a pre-med student. Um, 
I go to Northwestern Health Science Universities, but obviously we're doing a bunch of stuff online. I'm thinking I'm only doing like a biochemistry lab on campus with everything going on. But yeah, um, I, when I'm not studying, I'm either working with my dad. We do remodeling or any kind of contracting work. Really? But I need to get a, yeah. So but what are some of the things that you do? Oh, um, flooring, kitchen, anything besides electrical or plumbing. Really? You know what? Yeah. I just finished, we just finished our major renovation of the house because you know that in order for us to buy a house in uh, Minnesota, we have to sell our house. But the, when the mm -hmm. realtor looked at our house, he said, eh, if you want to get the fair market value, you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do that, all that. If I knew, I would have uh, invited you to come down from <laughs> Soda <laughs> to live in our house and do some work here. But anyways, fantastic. All right, great. So you're also working while you're studying. Oh, you know what? You guys are inspirational. I don't know how you do it. I saw a we cat passing by. Either. Is it a member of your family? I just saw a cat. That'd be the white. <laughs> What's his name? Her name? You got this two? is Dwight and this is Kevin. Dwight and Kevin. Kevin. Okay. Are they a husband and wife? <laughs> no, brothers. Oh, brothers. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. Right. So anyways, um, thank you for joining us. So I have someone who is working away from home. I mean, not working, but studying away from home. And we have two who's working very hard very, very hard to support your school. You want to be a nurse and you want to be a doctor. What a nice combination. You should consider becoming a missionary family. So oh, you yeah. can go as a doctor and then you can go as a nurse. But anyways, um, let me ask a follow-up question here for both of you. Well, I'll try to share it on my Facebook account as well. So some of our church members can see as well. But what do you enjoy doing and what are your hobbies? And if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? Starting from Carmen. Um, well, I pretty much live and breathe anything performing arts. So <laughs> anything nice. singing or mm. musical. Um, my most recent hobby has been trying to learn the guitar. The mm. key word is trying. Um, and I, I spend a lot of time outside with my dog mm. and if I could go anywhere in the world, I would either go to Brazil because I've never been there, or I would go back to Machu Picchu in Peru. You went to Machu Picchu? Mm -hmm. Really? Um, Machu Picchu. And so the, what, what did you say one before? Brazil. Brazil, okay. Because in Brazil has one of the seven wonders of the world, right? Yes. Uh, okay, so Carmen, do you, can you, do you know the seven wonders of the world? I don't think I know all seven. Okay, try to remember. <laughs> uh, Machu Picchu is one. Okay. The statue, statue of Christ is one. It's called Christ um, the Redeemer. That's from Brazil. Yes. Yes. Um, pyramids. That's uh, one of the uh, seven ancient wonders, not the modern. So that's that's. Oh, that's there's not modern ones. Right. I didn't even know that. Right. So, but what you were talking about, <laughs> like Machu Picchu and Christ the Redeemer, is actually, uh, it's actually what is this? It's um, it's actually the 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 current, the modern seven wonders. And what about the other five? There's one in Rome. Oh, the Colosseum. Okay. Good. Um, and, and then there's one in China. Great Wall. That's right. Um, and there is one in uh, Jordan. It's a, it, it comes out in the Indiana Jones movie, Petra. Oh. Have you heard of Petra? Right, Petra. Yes. And there's one in Mexico. It's oh, in- Oh, uh, uh, those pyramid-y things. That's They're... called Chichen Itza. That's it. <laughs> Chichen Itza, right. And then, um, there is one, what did I miss? There is one in India. Taj Mahal. That's right. You're pretty good. 
Yes, so, I'm graduating this year. <laughs> okay. Good for you. So wonderful. So wonderful. So you like to travel, I, I see. Good for you, Carmen. So you play music? Uh, you play guitar? <laughs> I try. <laughs> try? Okay. But one day I look forward to listening to you sing. Okay, special music. Those who are watching the Netonka Church family, she, you need to ask her to do special music. These days, she doesn't need to be there in person, right, Taylor? We can just ask her to record something and we can play it. Good, thank you. So now, going to Taylor, what do you enjoy doing? Any hobbies? And if uh, you could go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? Um, I, when I have free time, I would say I like to travel. I don't get to do it as much as I would like to, but I wish, I hope I eventually one day will have more time to do it. Um, I love hiking and just being with friends and family. And I also love to just be with my dog. <laughs> like That's Carmen. wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, so where we live, Minnetonka is a beautiful place, right? Many lakes, yeah. there's some beautiful natural trails. Someone said that in Minnesota has the, the longest bike trail. Is that true? I don't sure. know. Okay. I don't do a lot of biking. <laughs> but I'm sure it's true. That's okay, that's okay. We just want to encourage people to move to Minnetonka, right? So maybe they can come yeah. to our church. Cool. So Sergey, tell me, what about you? What do you enjoy oh, doing? Um, There's some place that you could go to, where would you like to go? Well, I mean, with school and work and everything, it's a little hard finding something I like to do, but I'm saving money up right now to get myself a motorcycle. So hopefully this time next year, I'll have a motorcycle. Um, and Did then, you get a permission from the person that's sitting next to you? I didn't even know I needed permission. It, <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> but I mean... Okay, Taylor, Taylor, give my wife a call, okay? And <laughs> make her talk to a Sergey. And I think he didn't get it yet, but as soon as he gets it, the better it will okay. be. Okay, no, so it's go ahead. Happen, but um, if I, I mean, I, I would like to travel to many places, but um, mm -hmm. recently, if I could go anywhere, it'd probably be South Korea. Really? Uh, yeah. Why? Um, I've just been watching uh, a lot of sh South Korean uh, drama shows, and yeah, or K, and K drama. I think they call it K drama, right? <laughs> or or that. I guess. I mean, it, it was more of a like a documentary <laughs> or whatever. But it seems really interesting. I like the culture, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I I think we also have a like a decent um, Adventist base over there as well. Sure. In fact, Adventism in Korea is the, the strongest in Northern Asia Pacific Division. So you have more Adventists in Korea than any other Northern Asia countries. And I believe Korea is the number one country uh, when it comes to stewardship, the faithfulness of giving. So, but I think Korea has a rich culture, rich, delicious food. And uh, I think a lot of people like Korean music anyway. K-pop or whatever. But now moving our conversation to something more serious because, uh, but I'm glad, you know, Sergey, next time when you are ready to go to Korea, let me know. And I'll, you know, I don't have my family there, but I was born there. So I may be able to introduce you to some places that you can go anyways. So now next question is a bit more serious. When did you choose to follow Jesus and why? I want to start from Taylor. When did you choose to follow Jesus and why? Uh, I think you're still young, relatively speaking. So I'm guessing your age is kind of college student age. So you're not 30 or 25, much younger. But when did you choose to follow Jesus and why? Yeah, so I'm 21 right now. Um, when I was about like six years old is when I just started going to church in general. Um, and I ended up really liking it, just like the culture, you know, there's not a lot I could like grasp as a six year old, but um, I had a good like group of friends I met there and grew up with them. And I would say at the age of like 14 probably is when I like 
made like an intimate choice to like intentionally follow Jesus. Um, I would say that was the year I went on a missions trip for the first time and kind of just opened my eyes to like how good I have it. And, and it just, you were 14, you said you were 14. My mm -hmm. first mission trip was not until I was 27 or something, but anyway, oh, but I grew up in a mission field. My father was the, is the first missionary sent by the Korean uh, Adventist church. But anyway, wow. continue please. So. So yeah, you went so to a mission I, trip? No, I would, yeah, so I just, that was kind of like my, I was really nervous to go as a 14 year old. Um, but I think that was like a huge step in my, my like journey with God. And that um, I just kind of realized like these people like completely rely on God. They don't have like a backup plan like we do here when things go wrong. Mm. And that just made me realize like, yes, I have the like, everything around me is like, I can have a backup plan, but like, I need to really just like completely put my faith in God and choose him for everything and trust him completely. Mm. One thing about mission trips is when you go to mission trip, when you are placed in a totally foreign environment, you, you get to that vulnerable moment, right? You, it's either you give up or you learn to trust God even more, right? And mm -hmm. so a lot, a lot of people who go to mission trips, they have uh, conversion experience because they uh, kind of live the life of Jesus Christ. You know, I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing. Um, and I know that you and Sergey recently joined this global digital missionary movement and with some young people who call Jesus Live. And, uh, uh, I'm glad that you're a part of that. We can talk about that a little bit more later. But before I go to Sergey, let me go to Carmen. Um, what about you? When did you choose to follow Jesus and why? Um, well, like I said, I was born and raised Seventh-day Adventist. So I've kind of like, I've always followed Jesus Christ. But the moment where it, I made the conscious decision that this is what I believed and not what I believed because my parents told me um, was in fifth grade when I was 11 years old. And uh, I didn't really have any friends at school. And I was kind of just, I was feeling very defeated because I was trying to fit in, trying to make friends in my very small class. And uh, one of the things I used to do was listen to um, popular music um, so that when the other girls would play songs, like I could sing along with them. And I never really liked it that much, like not to say that there's anything wrong with uh, popular music, um, but I didn't, it just wasn't really my thing. I, I didn't really like most of the songs. And so I came home one day feeling um, very defeated and I was in my room crying and I turned on the radio and of course what came up was the popular songs of that year and I kind of just like slammed the skip um channels button thing and it landed on 98.5 which is the Christian radio station in mm. the Twin Cities and mm. that was when that was just kind of like my wake-up call like like it's like god know. moment right god is trying yeah. to tell you something or signal something to you mm -hmm. wow what an amazing so you were 11 and 14 so sometimes you know i i had a meeting today i had a nominating committee meeting today uh and one of the things that as a pastor needs to do is he needs to be present to all those committee meet, you know meetings um i enjoy talking to you guys more than sitting in a committee, I, I hope you, you understand that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're 14 and you decided, oh, you know what? I wanna follow Jesus and you're 11 and you had those moments. But some of the people in the church think that you are too young, 11 and 14. And what breaks my heart sometimes is that, you know, you don't receive the attention when you're 11, 12 and 13. In my opinion, that's when you are most impressionable 
you are starting the self-discovery of what is you and what is not you. And you are making more conscious decisions. But I'm so excited to hear this. We're continuing this. What about you, Sergey? Um, I like, by the way, I like your look. <laughs> Someone else I, doesn't know, like my, it though, but. Yeah, maybe I should my, grow mine too. It's my Rona beard, but, <laughs> um, but for me, it was, uh, if I'm being honest, like a lot later in life, like 19, um, 20, I, after high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I thought I really like computer science and I, I definitely do. It's, it's really interesting. I love anything to do with technology, mm. but, um, we Taylor and I went to a wedding um in Oregon and for some reason like I had a break and I was thinking about stuff a lot and I decided like man I I really want to be um like Jesus I want to definitely help people out I'm not sure how I could possibly um do that with computer science and the, I, I feel like I feel when there's a godly presence a lot when, when I help others. Mm -hmm. Like I, I always got um, either upset or whatever when um, people would say that they would just easily like talk to God or whatever. I, I can't do that. I've never mm -hmm. felt that. I feel God when I help others. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that presence when I help others. So I was like, you know what, I want to help others and I am interested in the sciences and I so I want to become a doctor. Um, mm. And so that's when I decided to really reevaluate my life and like see what are my intentions mm. like with my life and I need to straighten things out, you know? Yeah, listening to you, I'm thinking, yeah, I could see a future missionary doctor in the making with uh, his nurse assistant, I'm not assistant, but <laughs> RN registered nurse. Um, I think it's Mother Teresa who said, if you wanna find yourself, lose yourself in service of others or something like that. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you wanna find your true identity, you know, lose yourself uh, in the service of others. You know, I think for me, I mean, it seems like compared to you guys, my I, my life was even more sorry and pathetic. I mean, I, trust me. I mean, there was a time that I thought about walking away from God. I mean, there was a moment. I mean, who'd have thought that you're a senior pastor? I guess that's your luck. That you, <laughs> um, someone actually, I actually thought about leaving the church, and this is the reason why I am uh doing everything that i can because the life that i was living without jesus was not pleasant at all and it was not that mission trip you know probably i would be lost in this world having said that now sergey what is the god-given mission of your life that's a loaded question what is yeah. the god-given mission of your life um well, honestly, I want God to tell me that, but um, for me, I feel like it's just like uh, helping others as much as I can, obviously, while helping myself, you know, uh, but um, caring for others, trying trying to be there for others, um, e even if I am not feeling like it or if I'm too tired, just like trying to be there. Um, sorry, I wish I had a be much better answer than that. No, I think, you know, again, that's a hard question. It's not an easy question. I mean, you're talking about a dog, God given a mission in your life, and it's not easy. And I think, you know, we go through that period called adolescence. It's a time when you are asking that question. What is the meaning of my life? You know, what about you, Carmen? What is the mission of your life? Um, well, first, I just kind of want to comment on the conversation we just had there. Like, I think it's one of the things that 
um, my parents told me before coming to college was it's okay to change your major. And I think that really applies to God's mission for your life. Like he, um, you could discover at any point that, oh, this was really what I was meant to do. I used to think I was going to cure cancer. Like I was going to be a biologist and I was going to cure cancer. <laughs> I, or Ochem made me realize that that was not the right way for me to go. Um, uh, and instead I turned to the one thing that I had loved consistently through my life, which was performing and music. And now as a performer and as an artist, I strive to make the road that is the journey of life less painful by bringing joy so I kind of see um I kind of see myself as um bring as bringing smiles and understanding um and education to a world um that you know kind of sucks sometimes <laughs> um as we're all like trying to find our way I think art can really help people process and yeah does that make sense the question is um my let me throw this question and taylor i mean um does god change the mission that he has given you or we change to reach the mission god given mission in our life meaning to say that god always has that mission uh whatever that is and he wants you to realize that mission but we may be taking detours because we're more eager and willing to follow what we want to do rather than surrender ourselves to the leading and guiding of God. But I don't think God would say, you know, you, I want you to be a blessing to the world. And he said, no, I changed my mind. No, no, I want you to, <laughs> you know, no. So I think God has a mission for everyone, but um, realizing that is not easy. And I think that is a process. You know, and sometimes it takes longer for me. It took me so long. And because it took me so long, I'm thankful that you seem to have figured it out. Sergey, it seems like you're, you figured out more than I figured it out. Uh, because when I was your age, I was more interested in doing what I like to do and what would make me feel, uh, what would serve me than me serving other people. So Taylor, coming to you, what is the God-given mission of your life? That is a very loaded question. Um, and I feel like I'm still trying to figure it out as well. Um, but I would say to just kind of pursue the gifts God has given me, which I'm still trying to figure out. Um, but I feel like something I, I feel like a gift I've gotten from him is um, just like caring for others and helping others. Um, it's something I get a lot of joy out of. And uh, so I think doing that where I can is a, a mission I'm called to in my life and also just like encouraging others and uplifting them. Yeah. Hey, you all have beautiful hearts, I must say. I must say. It's inspiring to listen to you. Thank you for your answers. Um, but let, let me see whether you uh, agree with the statement. I say to young people, that there are three important days in life. Uh, and first is the day that you and I were born. Is that an important day? I think so. I don't because remember I it. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I forgot my birthday too, right? That's how much, how important my birthday is. But that's the day that I came to this world. But the second, perhaps more important than the, the day that we were born is the day that we realize why. You know, because to think that I just came to this world for me to squander life and die at the age of 70 or whatever. I don't know. It's, uh, I, it seems like life should be more than that. So the second important day is the day that we realize why we are born. Why are we here? And the third, I believe, is the day that we start to live the God-given mission in your life. So I believe right now is the time that we need to ask the question, hey, God, what is the mission that you have placed in my life? And do you know it? And are you ready to follow? Okay, time flies and already 
spend half an hour. So we still have some more questions to ask. Um, so let me just, how has the COVID-19 changed your life? Uh, let's start with Sergey. You were saying you're taking online classes and you know it's, it's not fun to be studying at home, right? Or do you like um, it? It's not necessarily that it's not fun. It just, um, when, you know, if, if you're in your bed, for example, and you're doing homework in your bed, that's not an ideal place to do your homework. Usually you would want to do it at a library or somewhere where you're just gonna be focused on studying, no distractions. Um, I feel like the our, the past semester, the summer semester I took was a little bit harder because I was just getting used to full fully online classes, but now it's not that bad. And I uh, just work more. So making a little bit more money. Um, yeah, but I mean, I wish, you know, we still had more time, but it's not like we're ever going to get that. So mm -hmm. regardless, Thank COVID or not. Mm -hmm. So Carmen, how has it changed your life, you know, COVID-19? Um, <laughs> mostly academically. Um, I am definitely more of an in-person Kind of gal and now like everything is online and I, I love paper. I know they kill trees but I love paper <laughs> so it's that's kind of been an adjustment for me. Also my school decided to um, shorten the semester so we're cramming the same amount of work into less time so the assignments are longer there's more reading every night and it really sucks. Um, but other than that, I think I learned, um, one thing that I think I've learned about myself is that I actually do need social interaction. I used to consider myself like a hardcore introvert. Like I love to be alone. I love to spend time in self-reflection. And I think, so when the pandemic hit, I was like, ah, oh, no big deal. I do this all the time. And then like a little bit into it, I was like, oh, no, I miss people. So that was Me kind too. of a nice self-discovery. One thing I appreciate about- I have a comment on that. Sorry, Go ahead, Sergey. Go ahead, Sergey. I was about to say, to add to that, yeah, we are social creatures. And I did forget that I didn't realize, I used to really hate going to lectures, but then, you know, when COVID hit, I realized how much I actually loved being in a lecture room with all of my classmates. Um, yeah, just didn't realize how much I, I would actually miss the social interactions. Hmm. What about you, Taylor? Um, you know, maybe I'm a, a little the odd one out here, but I <laughs> honestly, I like online school. <laughs> um, I do, I will say that it's a little bit harder to like actually grasp the information that I'm learning, but it works a lot better with my schedule being that I'm working overnights and being that I work in a hospital, I still get a lot of social interaction. <laughs> so and you still have to do social distancing, right? I do have to do social distancing, mm -hmm. but I'm like wearing all my protective gear and I get to talk to people still so it's definitely changed the way interactions are and how school and work is but um I don't like the pandemic itself but I, I I'm not like hating online school mm -hmm. oh and she's okay. still regaining her sense of smell little by little she can like only smell like spicy stuff right now because I, I had COVID back in May when there was like peak. Mm -hmm. So it kind so of changed her life a little bit more than mine. Mm -hmm. So you guys are COVID survivors, right? So I am. He probably right? had it too, but no symptoms. <laughs> right. Well, um, Taylor, I am so thankful that you are healthy. You're healthy and I hope that the sense of smell will come back, you know, because much of the taste of food, you know, it's not, 
just uh, coming from your tongue, the, the sense of taste, but it's a mixture of olfactory, the, the smell and everything makes the food taste so much better. Yes. So I hope that those senses will come back, Taylor, so you can start enjoying the food. By the way, is uh, Sergey a good cook? Yeah, he is. He is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have my own kitchen knife that I, I got as a wedding present <laughs> that was very expensive. And he actually loves to cook. Yeah. Really? It yeah. calms so, me down, takes the stresses yes, yes. away. So Taylor, just invite me whenever you think that he's cooking <laughs> a delicious meal. All right. So let's g get to the next topic. Uh, time is running out very quickly. I yes. want to cover some more questions. Are you guys millennials or Gen Zs? You I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> it's a label. We're human right. beings. 1998. <laughs> yes. Right. So, so you guys are born in 1998? 1999. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are borderline. You know, if you feel like one day you say, oh, I'm a millennial, if you don't feel like being an older generation, you could just say, <laughs> I'm a Gen Z. Okay. Hey, <laughs> do whatever you like. But, but here is the thing the millennials are the first global generation. What I mean by that is, you guys know no boundaries. Quite literally. Like, because you have friends in France, you have friends in South Korea, you, you have friends in Papua New Guinea or different countries you know, in this world, right? So, okay, I'm looking at the pictures behind you, Carmen. One is Brazil, I can see that. The other one is Lebanon. What is that one? <laughs> that's what is Peru. That? Oh, that's Peru. <laughs> so you are actually representing, is your parents from Peru? Yes, my dad is both Peruvian uh, and Brazilian. Oh, Peruvian and Brazilian. So he's like a Peruvian Brazilian. Yes. Like, like my wife is, uh, Portuguese, Canadian, American. Yeah, should be an American. What about you? What is your um, heritage, um, Sergey? Oh, um, are you? Well, it's um, really weird. So, I Min am Minnesotanian or something. Well, technically, like I was born in Moldova. My oh. heritage would be Ukrainian, but I can only can speak Russian. And I live in Minnesota, so I'm kind of like uh, lost. <laughs> yeah, I'm lost. Exactly. He's yeah, a lost it's, puppy. It's, that, 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 no, we say to people like that who have experienced multiculturalism as a, a global, uh, uh, you know, generation or a third culture. Some will people will refer to people who have lived in many different countries as a product of third culture, but I don't like that categorization because third sounds so third if you know what I mean right <laughs> it's, it sounds so third so I like to call it global generation meaning that you are the global cultural product because you're a byproduct of all those cultural experiences what about you Taylor I am born and raised in Minnesota okay good for you she's okay. a Saint Michaelian <laughs> <laughs> that's fine that's fine okay so now Moving to another more serious question. How has, why is all this happening? Why are you guys having to experience this that, you know, some people didn't have to experience at a, such a young age? I mean, you're just starting your life and you're stuck at home. You're stuck in your apartment. I mean, not quite literally, but the life has changed, right? So why is this happening to us now? What's going yeah. on? Um, I, unless anybody wants to take this one. Or... Go ahead. You... Okay. Okay. Um, I, I mean, we definitely have it a lot better than, uh, you know, the third world countries and um, some countries that in the beginning didn't even have a bunch of ventilators and they didn't have protective equipment. I mean, like America is a first world country apparently, but we didn't either until a little bit later. Um, yeah, I don't know. We, it, it is hard, but it's manageable. I, I want to say like, I, I think this def generation definitely is, because um, we grew up with technology, first of all, like we were the ones learning how to use all this stuff, the phones, the laptops, while our parents are catching up. Uh, we're the ones that have to, you know, get used to 
from being in person to online. Um, honestly, I don't think it affects it affected us all that much. I think, at least speaking for myself and Taylor, I think we got lucky c- compared mm-hmm. to some other people. Uh, Carmen, I don't know your experience. Maybe you could shed mm-hmm. some light on that. Yeah, Carmen, go ahead. With, by the with way, the virus. Uh, by the way, Sergey. Um, by the way, you guys, uh, those who are watching, these are the hosts of the Minnetonka. Um, live connect so you will see them interviewing other young people so Sergey good comeback bro I really like it because I was looking for somebody <laughs> who can help me out I'm running out of breath here thank you for thank you for asking the question so Carmen tell me how has this you know everything that is going on affected your life but you guys are also dealing with another form of pandemic right the in countries, Iowa I'm just speaking in general that oh. the country is divided and we're from Minnesota, you know, we're from <laughs> Minneapolis and you know, the, all the things that are happening in this world. Um, when I, I have a pastor friend and he took me to uh, the spot, you know, I think they turned that into a memorial of uh, George Floyd. So uh, the point that I'm trying to say is that you guys are dealing with so much, right? Not only COVID, but there is this, you know, the social justice issues and all that. But let me just ask the question. Like, let's talk about a little about social justice. Is that important to you? Are you guys involved in it? Or is your friends involved in it? Tell me. Carmen, go ahead. You first start with how you're doing. And then I like to go to Taylor. I want you to talk about the social justice. Uh, wait, so I'm just talking about how I'm doing? Or you can talk about well, you both. You just try to explain your, I guess. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean. By the way, Taylor, I... Sergey is a good co-host. I, I, I'm going to have a one show. With <laughs> By the way, next week I'm thinking of inviting. Um, we have uh, one of our youth. He is the what's the last name of Dr. Ruth? It's She's a, one of. Right. Huh? It starts with an N. I don't, I think so. I honestly don't know for sure, but okay. I know it starts but with anyway, an But right, anyways, their eldest daughter, I mean, eldest son is a medical student at, I think, University of uh, Minnesota or something. So wow. maybe we can invite him to come to our show and we can interview him. What it feels like to, anyway, study medical school with the social distancing. I don't know how that works, but go ahead, Carmen. Um, I will doing, uh, blah, blah, blah. wow, English, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Uh, I think the, the one thing that I'm struggling with most is that everything is happening so fast, um, like politically, globally, virus pandemically, um, that I'm, I'm having trouble processing. I'm a very slow processor it takes me a while for me to figure out how I feel about something um so I don't know this this summer was kind of an information overload for me with everything going out with figuring out this virus um to then being um in the same area where George Floyd happened and then right when I came down to Iowa we were hit with a land hurricane which is thing if you don't believe me, look it up. It's called a derecho. Um, and it demolished my campus. So mm. yeah, I, I've just been like, you know, now like lit- the first few like thunderstorms after that hit, I was just like laying awake, like when are the trees going to start falling? So it's, it's oh. you know, it's been a while. I don't know what it was like, now. I think I'm finally like, yeah. I don't know what is happening to this world. I mean, when I was up there for the first Sabbath in Minnetonka, at the time we were staying at a hotel and uh, we, we heard this loud noise outside and the wind was blowing. And then we're like, what is going on? And then later we found out there was a tornado warning. So I said, is this, is this something common in Minnesota? And she said, yeah. So anyway, that was my kind of welcome. But some, something is happening to this world, right? 
something is happening to this world that you guys are dealing with so much that previous generations didn't have to deal with. So Guru Taylor, um, how do you make sense of everything that is happening around you when you're living kind of at the heart of this social justice movement that is taking place? In fact, I think there is a rally uh, we had a staff meeting this week and someone told us because our church is located right next to the, the city hall that there is going to be a march like Black Lives Matter march and uh, I just told my staff to be aware of it you know that we'll have more people there uh, anyways so Taylor go ahead um yeah so I mean I'm also kind of a slow processor like Carmen uh but I think right now it's a good time to like talk to God and see like just not really see but like ask him why this stuff is happening and maybe it's an opportunity for us to turn to him and um, just see his hand guiding us in all of this and also just like taking the time right now with everything going on to like educate ourselves about what's happening and yeah, for me, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do, just take a lot of time to educate myself about everything <laughs> happening around me. Sergey, go ahead. Um, and more specifically to her point, when, when the sad event that happened with George Floyd, when that was going on, um, I saw on Twitter, like uh, a bunch of Black Adventists speaking up about racism they actually um, had in church. And you went to Southern, right? Southern University? I did, I graduated, that's yeah. my alma mater, Southern Ray. And um, I saw Black Adventists posting on Twitter showing like um, there was a black preacher uh, uh, doing a sermon and um, it's just really sad to hear the things that were said about him and about that entire situation. About who? And um, what about the police? It, it just, I just, I'm just talking more about racism in, in mm -hmm. our own churches. Right. And right. Taylor said that we need to talk about it and educate ourselves. And we definitely have to, you know, do our best to make everyone feel welcomed it's actually extremely sad to hear that sometimes we have racism in our own churches, in our own circles. You know, I think a lot of people, I mean, when, of course, the, you know, it's, it's when young people come in and say, Pastor, what's going on? You want to render listening ears and the support. And sometimes I say one of the best thing that we can do is just listen to people's experiences without pressing any judgment, but just creating that safe um, place for them to just talk about their feelings. But we're living in a culture that we're afraid to talk about our you know, deep emotions and feelings because when the world is so divided, it's almost uh, scary to show what you're feeling and what your thoughts are. But uh, part of what we're trying to do is create a safe room and this is why we're doing this, just kind of safe room. Let's just talk about it. How is it making you feel? Uh, there's no doubt uh, it has uh, much effect in us. Okay, let me change the subject a little bit here, unless that you have a follow-up thought that you want to add. But living in the, kind of, how should I say, at the center, because our church is 30 minutes away from uh, Minneapolis, something like that, right? Um, it's we're experiencing through it and to see that Black Lives Matter march taking place in our kind of, you know, the backyard of the church, because that's where the city hall is. It will remind us again, because I, to be very honest with you, I feel like just, it was too much, just too much. I can only take so much negativism, I mean, negativity. And I think my system, my body just kind of shut it down. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to pretend as if that that's someone else's world and whatnot. Um, but we cannot do that, right? At one point, we need to face it. 
maybe we can talk about that after asking this question. Where do you see yourself in 10 years, 10 years from now? Or where do you want to be 10 years from now? Um, Taylor. Um, I really hope to be graduated. I mean, I'm sure I will be. <laughs> um, <laughs> I personally, I want to. Unless that you want to do a PhD. Yeah, you better finish your school. Your parents I, will remind you. I actually you. really hope to get my master's in nursing. I don't know when that will happen. I don't know if it will be in the next 10 years, but eventually I want that to happen. Um, I would hope to have babies before I'm 31. <laughs> um, How many? And... Have you guys made a plan? Two boys, two girls, and well, three boys. We want to adopt one. Uh, we oh, yeah, want to yeah. adopt from Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor was, was like, like what? what? <laughs> oh, I okay. thought he meant like have like birthing three boys. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. Like... Yeah, things like that, Sergey. But I think he meant to say that he wants to adopt uh, a child or something. Yes. No, for yes. first, we always wanted to have four too, but we have three. Um, but yeah, you guys should have four. Uh, so I mean, we're that. talking right now. We like it any... might be a different story later on. So we'll see. <laughs> okay. But you know, I'm telling you, I, I want my members to have many babies. There's no sure way of church growth than having babies, right? Yes. Yep. Sure, and, I guess. Yeah, it actually, it's true. I was talking to uh, statistic, statistic, statistician, no, statistic, the one who's dealing with yes, stat oh, statistician or whatever. Yeah. I don't even know. Help me the say that one more time. People. The statistics, statistics people. Statistics people. Okay, there we go. That's easy enough. <laughs> So actually, he said, I mean, my biggest fear is this, okay, hear me out, is that your parents have sacrificed so much in the church, building this beautiful church building, and when time comes for them to retire, and they know only, they only have years left, my greatest fear is for them to say and ask the question, where are my children? I built this church, not built, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I stay in this church for the last 40, 50, 60 years. I think one of our, one of the patriarchs of the church, uh, Dr. Ken Dedeker, I think that's his uh, last name. I think he was at the church for 58 years and church history is about 62. But who is going to be the next uh, Dr. Yvonne, Dr. Ken, Marilyn? Some of those people will say, hey, this is my church. I'm going to take care of this church. This is my greatest fear um, that what if we lose the second generation of Minatonkan young people or third generation? That's my greatest fear. But I will let you guys answer the question. Where do you see, you see yourself in 10 years, uh, Sergey? Wow, it's 9.54. We only have six minutes. Okay, so, I mean, I'll answer quickly. Carmen will answer quickly and we can call it a night. But um in 10 years, I hope to uh, at least have be done with my residency. I, I'm not totally sure. Like have kids probably, maybe get a house. Um, yeah, just, just start, you know, like obviously we already started our family, but start it even more i guess if that makes anyway, sense you guys are going to have a beautiful children that's my blessing to you as your pastor and i could say it because you guys are kind of not kind of but so may god bless you may god bless your home carmen Thank where you. do you see yourself 10 years from now uh step one graduate from okay. college step two, <laughs> move back to minnesota step three uh work on my acting career but also get married uh step four uh have kids and still be an actress okay there you go so those are those are the things that help you to think right because we cannot just live for today we need to think about what will become in five ten years from now if you think about it if you live your life intentionally there's a good chance of you reaching and realizing that dream to God give a mission in your life than just living every day as to pretending as if yeah, you're, you know, you're, go ahead, Sergey, please go ahead. Well, I was going to say what uh, my dad, Papa Oleg, always tells me is that 
stop planning so far in advance. We don't even know if God's going to give us another, another day. So that's my counter argument to you. <laughs> well, I think, I think there's a wisdom in what your father said, and I will never argue with uh, <laughs> the parents of the youth. Um, so I think he has a point. He has a point. I think he's saying, be faithful today. Be faithful mm -hmm. to what you are living today. All right. Let's try to uh, wrap it up. But before I ask some last questions, you guys want to ask me some questions? Yes, we do. All right. Shoot. Okay, Pastor Jiwon, you've been at Minnetonka Church for a month now. What is your first impression of the church? My first impression of the church is people are very friendly. Um, and uh, I think the church is blessed. Um, you know, I, the church is very multicultural. So I feel that the church has a great leaders. Um, and uh, that's my first impression. They're very warm. Uh, people are very thoughtful, caring. They send me emails. Some even wrote me a card with a little gift card. Um, and it's been so generous. So we feel uh, welcome and loved. And we cannot wait for my family to locate there because unless we sell our house, we cannot buy a house and we're hoping that our house will be sold in two weeks. So thank you for the question. So my first impression so far, so good. Good. Uh, I hope you will stay that way. Um, so Sergey, you have a question for me. Oh yeah. So, I mean, you and Pastor Liz, you started a new sermon series um, and uh, you're going to be preaching this Sabbath, correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So um, the sermon series from wilderness to the promised land, uh, why, you know, studying the experiences that Israelites important for us to know? Mm -hmm. uh, first, you know, I want to say thank you to Pastor Elizabeth. In fact, Pastor Elizabeth will be our honor guest because uh, uh, the, the, the next Sabbath will be her next uh, last Sabbath. And she has been called to serve in the biggest church in Illinois conference. So, uh, you know, more powerful to her, we pray for her, and we're going to do a good send off, you know, for her. So, um, you know, we're going to invite her next week. But going back to the question that you were asking, I talked to Pastor uh, Elizabeth and said, you know, it's a very difficult time. We need to uh, have the sermon series and talk about how the Israelites, they started in a barren, dry land wilderness, but some of those who trusted God you know, enter into the promised land, Joshua and Caleb, right? So uh, the experiences that Israelites had in the wilderness is similar to, I believe, what we're experiencing right now. So I think there is that, um, you know, the, there is that, you know, you, you could feel that their experience is similar to ours. So I, we chose that um, series, the topic of that uh, series to encourage people that those who overcame wilderness experience at the end, what waited for them was the promised land. And we want to encourage church family to focus on the promised land rather than the wilderness experience. So uh, that's my answer to you. Uh, what about you, Carmen? Um, you have a question for me? Um, well, yes. Uh, just a, a general question about your ministry okay. plans. Um, what priorities do you have as the new senior pastor of Minnetonka? Okay, so I'm going to be very clear, and I hope the members of Minnetonka Church is watching. Uh, you know, the word pastor, and Carmen, you know this, right? Pastor, that's uh, Spanish, and in it, it implies shepherd. So when Spanish-speaking people are calling their pastor, Taylor, pastor, actually they're calling their pastors shepherd. Hi, my shepherd. Hi, my shepherd. Isn't that cool? So they're actually cool. calling their pastors, hi, my pastor, hi, my pastor. So what is the duty of a shepherd? A pastor, shepherd, is to protect the vulnerable. If there's a one sheep that is, has gone astray, you know, you have 99 in the fold, but you have that one is lost. And it is the duty of the pastor to look for that one that is lost and bring that sheep back. Uh, but, but I understand that the sheep are vulnerable, and among the sheep, some are even more vulnerable. Who are they? Children. So we need to protect our children, 
and uh, to everything that we can. Second, uh, youth, like you guys, you guys are away from home. You guys are working hard, building your future, building your life. Your parents are not there to support you. Your pastor is not there to support you. I get it. I understand life is not easy. There are moments that you want to come home and all that. So we need to do something about our youth. So youth ministry is very important. And the third is ministry to elders. They have done so much for the church. The least that we can do is we care for them. Make their uh, the, the last few days of their life um, a, a meaningful one. So thank you. I think this has been a very rich conversation that we had today. I feel like almost as if that we need to have a follow-up session. Maybe we just have to talk about that, Sergey. So okay. let's wrap it up. What is your takeaway? Let's start from Carmen, Sergey, and today, Taylor, you will have, um, you will go last. What is your takeaway from our session today, Carmen? Um, well, I really liked the part where we were talking about our role in social justice. Um, that is something I am very passionate about. Um, and I, if, if it's okay with you, Pastor, I would like to share one final thought or um, take your time. Words of, words of encouragement or words of um, advice as someone who has studied social justice. Um, frequently what I've been seeing um, is a lot of people that I'm sure this isn't their intention. In fact, I, I kind of know it's not their intention, but it's almost like people are trying to one up each other with how much their life sucks. And it's like, I, I personally feel like that's not going to be the most effective. Um, I am a huge believer in equity instead of equality. And if you don't know what equity is, equity is essentially giving more to those who have the least and giving less to those who have the most. So, you know, like where you are on that scale, like the more you have, the less you get. So instead of giving everyone the same thing, mm -hmm. you give everyone what they need. Um, and so I would just encourage people that instead of, you know, feeling maybe attacked or um, overlooked by um, social justice issues, like um, if I'm not being clear, I shall give an example. I am Latinx and sometimes I feel like the Black Lives Matter movement overshadows the racism towards Latin Americans in this country. Um, especially with the immigration from Mexico. Um, so the way I've dealt with that is by giving more to those that, oh, I'm not good at explaining this. Um, You're doing great. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, I'm telling you, Sergey yeah, is I would good. Just, I would just. <laughs> He's a good, good leader. Yeah. I would but just, you know what, Latinx. Yeah. Next. Um, yeah, I think what Sergey was trying to say earlier is we hope that we're living in a paradise, um, but that's not the case. And there are disparities, social injustice. And I think what we need to do as, um, as a generation that we are, see how subtle that was? I'm just kind of including me, myself into the <laughs> generation. I mean, you were but, subtle and then you said that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> But I think it's uh, shared the responsibility as the generation that mm -hmm. carries the, the global, the world. Um, and I think it's important that for us to be responsible in the well-being of others as well, right? Yeah. My but wife I think is, I just wanna say, right. oh, go ahead. <laughs> I think my wife is laughing behind me because I think she heard what we're doing. So, but there is a delayed reaction. So we moved on, but I hear my wife laughing at the background. <laughs> and now wait, and she's gonna laugh again because there's delayed reaction. So anyway, so okay, yeah. enough of that. So now, Sergey, what is your um, takeaway? But go ahead. Yeah, I mean, obviously- and My wife is still away. laughing. <laughs> well, I'm glad she's laughing and happy and uh, I hope the best to her. But um, obviously the, well, not obviously, but the takeaway I feel like is, you know, we have uh, a lot of stuff going on, on everyone, not just, you know, our generation has a lot of things going on with the pandemic, with 
finding work. We got to help each other as much as we possibly can. Just like Carmen said about equity. Um, I feel like as Christians, we should give as much as we possibly can. Um, we are supposed to be giving um, or the giving kind of people. You know, if, if you see someone who is in need, try to go help them. Um, because that's the only way to move forward, I feel like, in, in these times. Um, but yeah, uh, Taylor. Um, well, like I said earlier, I'm a slow processor. So sometimes I need a little time to process this whole conversation. <laughs> but um, I would say um, just today, there's so much uncertainty in the world. Uh, I think we all just need to take time each day to um, like have our focus be on God and turn to him for all the hardships happening around us and just be kind to one another. I feel like there's a lot of emotion going on with everything happening. So don't take it out on each other. <laughs> mm. Well, I think that would be the line to remember for our session today. Just be mm -hmm. kind to one another. Wow, that's a quotable thing that you sent. So I'm going to, to just kind to be to one another. Okay, wonderful. My takeaway is this. I feel so blessed uh, because this is first time that I'm having a heart to heart talk with some of the youth of Minnetonka Church. I haven't quite worried because I couldn't find you guys, but having found you now, I'm so thankful that you guys are uh, you guys all have a beautiful heart. So I think, Sergey, I think we may have to do part two. I think we need to may have to oh. do part two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but maybe. again, yeah, church family, um, if you're watching, just click like, just encourage these young people. So you will see them um, every, um, you know, every so often. So thank you for being here. Let me offer a prayer for you. And I'm going to play a song that will just remind us that God loves us. And uh, anyways, let me just pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you that we were able to spend this time together. Be with Carmen. Uh, she's away from home. It's difficult, but may you draw near her. Let her know that church family is here for her and she's never alone. And may we always be ready uh, you know, to render uh, helping hands. Uh, and may she know that she has a people, her pastor who cares, and the church members who cares, uh, uh, care for her very much. Uh, bless uh, Taylor and Serge, uh, Sergey. Uh, may you bless this beautiful couple um, who are filled with uh, such a kind hearts, wanting to serve and care for others. Uh, may you bless their plan. And I pray that one day Sergey will become a doctor and Taylor nurse and hope one day they can go to some places uh, that no one wants to go, no one wants to go and live a missionary life, Lord. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to be with Minnetonka Church family. Give them a good night's rest and may you bless our church in this difficult time. This is our prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 All right. So you know this song? What is this I called? think you said, I think it's called, um, um, I think the one who's performing this Yo-Yo, Yo-Yo, Yo-Yo Ma, and it's a channel suit number one in G major. I think this piece is known, if you, you, if you play cello, it's like, this is almost like a piece that you have to know how to play. But anyways. It's the cello Bible. Yeah, Good that's job. right. <laughs> hey guys, it was beautiful and wonderful. Let me take a picture. Let me take a screenshot. Oh, okay. So give a big smile. Hey, since you said um, you want to go to Korea, let me do something here. Make a little heart with your finger oh. like this and give a big smile. By the way, um, uh, you. How do you, what are you doing? Uh, we're making little I'm heart. just literally putting a right, little heart. <laughs> yeah. There and, you go. Uh, yeah, I'm so proud that Sergey <laughs> okay. and Taylor 
that you guys are also part of the global movement called Tija Smive, and Tija Smive is a digital Adventist movement. So try to get some of our church members to be involved as well, and let's change the world. Amen. Amen. Okay, love you all. Okay. Um, bye bye. Study. Go back to study or go to sleep. Whatever. <laughs> Studying it is right now. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye.